Uh, well, today we're celebrating um, the fact that 100% of our babies that have been enrolled in the Blues Project have survived their first birthday. September is Infant Mortality Awareness Month, and each year we come together as the Blues Project to host an event where we bring all of our moms and all of our babies that have gone through the program to celebrate, you know, another year of life. Um, the Blues Project offers pregnant women in the community immediate access to prenatal care, social support via peer-to-peer -peer interaction as well as our, our lovely Blues Project team members. We offer counseling, individualized case management as well as uh, referrals to community resources and services. Um, what is your uh... What is your ultimate goal for the Blues Project? Um, our ultimate goal is that we, we're able to uh, impact more lives. We want to open enrollment again for, for, for our study and for our program um, so that we can begin to provide women with, with uh, early onset prenatal care. We want to provide mothers and families with education on how to take care of themselves, how to take care of their babies, how to uh, build self-esteem and go on to pursue some, some identified goals that they may have for themselves. Centering Pregnancy was brought here to Memphis and Shelby County because we have a very high infant morbidity and mortality rate. Uh, what Centering does is we take small groups of women who are all due about the same time and we do their prenatal care together. The reason this is important is because they don't spend time in the waiting room, they don't spend time in an exam room, there's no waiting. The time that they're here is productive time. When it's time for their group, they come straight into the centering pregnancy room. They get their own blood pressure. They get their own weight. I measure their tummy and listen to their baby. They keep up with all of their own records. Um, and all the women, we take all that extra time and share and have a good time. We learn a lot. Um, there's a tremendous support system among the young ladies because they're all due about the same time. We group them by, these young ladies are all due in December. We group them by when they're due so they can share and have a really great time <laughs> and learn. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about wh why you ended up here. At, uh... To learn more about parenthood, yeah. basically. Uh, what kind of things have you been learning here? Um, tell me a little bit about the routine, how you come in and um, you know, do your height, your weight and your blood pressure. And tell me how, how all that works and about keeping the logs and things. How, how does that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm just uh, shy. That's all right. Um, just come in, sign our name on the log, and get our name tag, mm -hmm. and start. We keep up with our blood pressure and weight, and the baby's heart beating and stuff. And, uh, is this your first baby? Yes, sir. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me uh, about uh, your plans for the baby and uh, mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing and when she's born. and Playing with her yeah. every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Of them sitting out in the waiting room, we take take away that time. We they come Instead, they come straight in here. They get their own weight. They get their own blood pressure. And they keep up with it themselves. So they are... In order for them to take care of a baby, they should know how to take care of themselves. So this is what they're learning to do. And they, they're also learning about, man, every as, from every aspect of their pregnancy and their babies, everything that they're going to need to know and um, more. Anything that they, no topic, <laughs> no topic is limited we are unlimited we talk about anything we talk about everything try to make we want them to be as prepared as possible when they go into labor and delivery like i got this that's great um they are all i mean all of our patients come out ready we even hear from the nurses and doctors at the hospital like man i love your centering pa patients because they know they know what's going on with them and we have most of our patients they come in they go to the hospital ready. and they all come back like i'm so happy that i did this and i'm i feel great i'm grateful to be able to do this program and help the moms to be. Thank you.
Yeah, that's great. I believe that we have families who want the best for themselves and want the best for their children. However, they are kind of at a disadvantage in, in knowledge as to how to access the services that they need. We assume that all moms, all women, all everybody knows how to get to the services that they need that's going to help benefit them, them and their children. Um, what we do is we educate moms how to navigate the community, how to navigate, how to how to be independent, how to you know make appointments and, and how to get to those appointments and how to make sure that we're, we're, we're gathering the, the right amount of knowledge about the disease or the ailment or whatever's going on. You know, we're teaching them to be imp educated, informed, empowered is what we're, we're doing with these women. Um, and, and it's not hopeless. If, if, if they can talk to anyone who's gone through the Blues Project, they'll see that our moms not only are, are having delivering babies that are normal birth weight, um, our babies are surviving their, their first year of life, but moms are empowered to go on to continue school. They're, edu they're going on to pursue an education goal. They're employable and obtaining jobs. You know, they're, we're looking beyond this pregnancy and looking toward the future. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so just tell me a little bit about what you're learning and, and, and whether you, you feel like this is really making a difference for you. Tell me about really it. Really it is. Because uh, really I wasn't thinking about no breastfeeding and all that. And, uh, it, tells me a lot about different shots to take or different things to take to birth control and stuff so it's it's a good experience <laughs> so i'm loving every moment of it and i enjoy being with my little nurses <laughs> we love you too how did you tell me how, how did you find out about it how did you get down here to this place i mean oh well really i've been going here for a while so um, about the whole pregnancy thing, I never did it before, so. So you were coming here for health care? Yeah. <laughs> Not that no. Kind of explain that for me, then, oh. so, know, so we know what you're talking about. Oh, well, I was coming here for, like, just gynecologist, that's it. And I started when I was young, and I used to, um, well, I had to be, like, transported to like a whole nother place because I had back surgery and so I used to think that I couldn't get pregnant or whatever but I guess it was possible some kind of way so I mean this I've been here for like ever since I was little we're well, going here ever since I was like a baby um, beyond just dealing with the problems comes the chore of living and to make sure that they understand that that is that goal of the program to increase, as I said before, their capacity for love, and learn, and, and self-education, uh, their capacity for personal integrity are things that they can continue to um, have access to in the way of resources so that they don't forget those valuable lessons. There are several babies that have died in our community because of um, potty training behavior that that boyfriends have gone on to to shake or to uh, to physically harm a child because they didn't potty train the way that they felt in the timely fashion that they felt that they should. Um, or you have parents leaving their children with um, people not qualified to, 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 to be effective in taking care of these children. You have domestic violence that exists in the home and, and, and moms not, a, not being aware, you know, come to the uh, self-actualization of the fact that they're being abused. I mean, it's a variety of social issues surrounding infant mortality. It's bigger than this child being born low birth weight or or or, or premature. It's, infant mortality is a uh, there's a wide gamut of, of of community factors that 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 impact infant mortality. Um, also, you have a number of moms that are, you know, uh, not going to school, have not completed education programs, GED programs, gone on to college to get that training, to get that job that's going to help them overcome some of the barriers, you know, that, that, that allows them to, to take care of their children. Um, the Blues Project works with these moms to make sure they understand why it's important, not only to make them go to school, but understand why it's important that they have a quality education, why it's important that they have the skills to get that job, how to dress for job interviews, how to present yourself, you know, uh, how, you know, the things like cell phone messages and all those basic things that keep 
families and, and individuals from getting jobs. We work with our families and give them the resources or help them acquire those resources from the community to make sure that they, they, can, they can overcome these barriers. One of the things we've come to understand is that uh, the process of gestation, uh, the internal environment inside of a mom for a baby to be born is a very complex process. It seems uncomplicated for people that have normal deliveries all the time, but uh, apparently there are elements for African Americans, elements that are related to stress, elements that have other uh, clinical correlates, uh, and certainly uh, there are uh, those extraordinary um, uh, linkages between infant mortality rates and poverty. And so when you have what is almost the perfect storm, African Americans that have some inexplicable elements that lead to higher infant mortality rates, uh, high levels of poverty, low socioeconomic status, and uh, some of the other components that we know are part and parcel with causing prematurity, low birth weight babies, in other words, uh, decreased access to health care, decreased access to prenatal care specifically, uh, other correlates in terms of very poor maternal health, maternal preconceptual health, that becomes a perfect storm. Uh, young moms, moms that did not plan uh, pregnancies, not only teenagers, but young adult women also uh, who are not spacing their pregnancies, um, persons who have poor literacy, much less poor health literacy, who are not aware of the implications of their poor health and poor decision making upon those children uh, that are still in their wombs. So it becomes a very complex issue, all of those elements coming together to uh, generate higher levels of infant mortality. I think in theory, um, all of the approaches to intervene at appropriate times in the lives of women who are either going to be pregnant or who are pregnant, all of those approaches can be successful. Uh, what I really have appreciated is the value of programs such as uh, Centering Pregnancy, in which we have moms who are there with a cohort of other mothers at a similar point in their gestational age uh, who are supporting each other, so there's peer support, and they're getting uh, very good hands-on caring uh, health care and encouragement from a health care provider, a nurse a midwife or nurse practitioner trained in centering pregnancy. And, and the combination of the peer support and the loving hands-on uh, both clinical and social support of a practitioner has helped these young mothers uh, understand A, uh, what's happening with the pregnancy that they are currently engaged in and how they might be successful moms and to keep those babies healthy once they're born, but also B, uh, how they might project uh, a different trajectory in their own lives so that they may not uh, get pregnant again in an unplanned fashion, that they could space out their pregnancies, and really that they could turn the corner in some of their own uh, plans for their lives, uh, improve the lot of the child they're about to have, and then perhaps be a little bit more deliberate in terms of uh, planning their family going forward. Uh, those have been some of the best examples of how young women will say in their own testimonies, I wish I had known then what I know now, and I'm so grateful for this kind of support and intervention. Great story also know that in doing all the right things sometimes it still happens you know you can go to all your prenatal care appointments take your vitamins your folic acid reduce your stress and it can still happen and it doesn't matter you know how much money you have what race you are but on the opposite side of that some decisions that we make early on before we even become pregnant as mothers and fathers can almost negate that positive birth outcome like drinking and smoking and you guys know that but the the sad part to me is a lot of this we can prevent by having knowledge and what you got that's why what you all do is so important 
and you may not see the effects because sometimes we don't know how we're reaching people but yes there was a clear sign that we reached people I mean they were just you know all over the conversation asking the right questions and pretty much uh, when you ask them well what did you learn different and three of the guys said I'm gonna use protection more you know I'd like for them to say they're not gonna have sex but in the real world the best I can hope for was for honesty to say, I'll use protection more. And so I really respected that. Young ladies that we spoke with at Girls Inc. locations were saying that they hadn't heard of folic acid. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that, you know, they were supposed to take 400 mcgs of folic acid daily. Mm -hmm. Or to lay the baby on their back instead of yeah. their stomach. I mean, this is what they were saying yesterday, too. The guys and the young ladies were saying they didn't know just something that simple can help save a life in the rollover deaths. They had never heard about that either and how all you gotta do is put the baby in the crib to prevent that. Most people that I talk to, them being adults, they tell me that they're very proud of me being an African-American male that I'm out here educating people and actually doing something to help against this instead of just sitting at home watching the news and complaining about it. And some people that I've connected with that have told me that they have experienced infant mortality we had have an a actual conversation about infant mortality and things that they could help, and they actually walk away with something meaningful that they've done, that someone of their own race can help them with. So, to me, that it makes me feel that I've actually, I'm actually out here doing something that I have something to leave my mark on when I leave this world. So, I mean, I mean, we all have to do something, but for me to be doing this, this makes me really happy inside. I learned these different things when I was young and um, not being an adult, still in school and things like that. And many of them didn't know what infant mortality was or that African Americans have the highest rate and that um, Memphis has one of the worst zip codes for infant mortality. A lot of people aren't just aren't informed about it and I felt good being able to inform them. Mm -hmm. There was a girl in my school and I was, she's pregnant and I was telling her what she can do to prevent infant mortality and she was asking me questions like what should she take, what should she eat, how much should she see her doctor and stuff like that and I was telling her what she should take her 400 mcgs of folic acid and African Americans do have the highest rate of infant mortality and I didn't, I didn't want her to be another statistic. And so this is the baby we use in this kid that gets shaken for, um, to emphasize the point of shaken baby syndrome. And we do like overdo it, but <laughs> I tell people because when they get upset, and this is part of our skit, the, the guys, and Jay is one of the fathers, he has to shake this baby doll. And first they didn't want to shake it because they know what it meant. But to make a point, I had to beg them, please shake the baby. They wanted to do it like this. I'm like, no, that won't, that won't disconnect. You got to do it like, you know, like that. Jay, show them how you did the baby. <laughs> and then people are so yeah, mad about him shaking yeah. the baby doll. They get yeah. upset about it. First off, I do not do actual babies like this because <laughs> I, I am an older brother. So I've had to deal with up to right. four Taking care of siblings babies. plus nieces and nephews. His disclaimer. Just... And this is not right. Never do this, but this is how yeah. it happens. Stop crying. Okay. That's how he has to do the baby in the skit, and he hates it. And people, they laugh at first, like, "Look at how is he shaking that baby?" Then they realize the impact that this is how people do when they're stressed and they want the baby to cry, not intending to kill the baby, which the baby does die in the skit. But it, it was hard at first to do that. It was hard.